the key questions to us is, have financial planners played their part in helping their clients to make an informed investment decisions? In this, these are the key issues that we, are, we all look upon the financial advisors to help us to do. The first one is the fiduciary duty. Professional financial planners owe their clients a fiduciary duty in that he or, need, he or she needs to put the needs of the clients first. In other words, the financial planners must always act in the best interest of the clients. And in fact, in many jurisdictions, this fiduciary duty obligation is imposed on the intermediaries either by law or by the regulations put out by the regulators. And I understand that your organization, FPSB, to your credit, has already set out this very important duty in your code of ethics. Thank you. And then the second thing a regulator's journey will look at would be the conflicts of interest issues. It is very important for the intermediaries when they de have dealing with their clients is to resolve and deal with the potential conflict of interest issues. In short, the intermediaries should try to avoid coming into any potential conflicts when they serve their clients. And if the conflicts cannot be avoided or resolved, then probably the intermediaries should consider probably not to advise or deal in that particular matters. And even if so, then the material conflicts and that conflict of interest have to be disclosed to the customers and make sure that the customers is fully informed about these conflicts and also the customers is fairly treated in such circumstances. The financial planners really are expected to identify the risk of the investments and highlight all these risks to the investors. The key thing is that financial planners should not just pass a copy of the prospectus to the clients and ask the clients, please read it yourself and make your investment decisions. And of course, equally, the information presented to the clients must be easily understood and easily acted upon by the investors. And the financial planners are also expected to ensure that whatever recommendations made to the investors are accurate and not misleading. This representing that financial products are low risk alternatives to risk to deposits and failing to explain the risk and complexities of these products to the investors will usually result in customer complaints or allegations of the mis-sellings. And finally, I'll come to the third point, it's about the suitability obligation. The financial planners are really expected to carry out due diligence on both the customers and on the products they recommend in order to ensure that the products recommend are suitable to the investment profile of all their clients. And finally, being the regulators in, in Hong Kong, I can also share with you some of the latest initiative we just put out a few months ago. Um, our new rules was issued in April this year. Um, there were a lot of the requirements, but on the intermediaries, on the financial planners' code of conduct side, I just list out the first three key issues I would like to share with you. The first one is about investor characterization. What does it mean? Many people probably never understand. The reason is, based on our Hong Kong experience looking at the selling of these structured products, we find that, in fact, nowadays, all these structured products have and bad derivatives. They are no longer plain vanilla products. All of them have some sort of the derivative elements. Then the next question is, since all the regulators throughout the whole world are operating on the disclosure basis, that means the, 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 the burden is now put on, one, is on the financial planners to give that advice to the client, and two, is for the investors to understand about the products they are going to buy and the investment they are going to make. Then coming back to the earlier point I made, if so many of these products have embedded derivative elements, and if the investors themselves do not have that knowledge, do you think they can make a wise and a good decisions themselves? 
So in Hong Kong, we put out this requirement that we ask all the financial planners, you need to do to make an assessment about your client's knowledge of derivatives. So that in case when you are offering a derivative products or structured products with a derivative elements, then you need to ask yourself, being a financial planner, is this client with the knowledge or without the knowledge? If the client doesn't have the knowledge, then quite likely than not, the client may not understand the key features of the products, may not fully appreciate the risk involved in investing in these products. If that's so, then the burden on the financial planners would be much higher. And then the second idea we put out is purely to ban the offer of the gift. Again, when we look at the experience of the promotion of the products in Hong Kong, look at the over the last two years, we find that a very strange way. The promotion focus is never, never on the key features of the products or the risk involved. But rather, if you pick up a promotion leaflet, when we look at the center part of the promotion leaflet, the, always the focus is on how much supermarket coupons you can get by investing in these products. So all the investors' investors' attentions have been directed into how many more coupons can I get, rather than really look at the key features of the products. So we say, sorry guys, we need to pull out this requirement, say that there will be a total ban of the offering of the gift when the intermediaries are promoting a specific products. So the aim of this project is really focused on the suitability obligations on the intermediaries in the distributions of the complex financial products. We are not interested in those plain vanilla type products, but we are more focused on the complex structured financial products that are now being pushed to the retail investors. It is very important for the professional bodies to establish and enforce these industry standards of, of standard to ensure, and, and you have a very major role to play to ensure that the industry will uphold the highest standard of the conduct and integrity when providing services to their clients. The next thing is about the provisions of the ongoing training and guidance to members. Again, it's a very important point to help your members to upkeep their standards and get a breeze of the latest regulations. And finally, as I keep on emphasizing the key point, the final point is let's continue our, our continuous dialogue to ensure that we understand the concerns and also we hear your voices.